Welcome to another empowering episode of Follow the Leaders, the podcast where we delve into the world of leadership. I'm Jamie Gale, your host, and today's episode is a special solo edition. Join me as I share valuable insights and ideas on leadership, drawing from my own experiences and lessons learned. Welcome back. Okay, if you're listening to the show, you are probably not a person who shies away from difficulty. Leaders by design are not looking for easy ways out. We tend to enjoy solving problems and we are really willing to put in the extra work where it's needed to lead our group or get an idea off the ground, lead our organization and get to a business goal, even when there is just not an easy way there, not a simple path. And that's what really makes us someone who's willing to step forward into positions of leadership. If we were looking for an easy way out, we would, we would not be sitting here together today. We all know that we are used to working through and in challenge, and we don't expect things to be easy. So one thing that I have learned over the years is that we can sometimes not notice when the hurdles are getting higher, the processes are getting too complicated, and the friction is getting more grating. We already expect our work to be a big lift. And so when it is, we just we just go with it. We tolerate this hotter water and it can lead to our own burnout. It can lead to overwhelm. And also for those who are on our team, who work for our companies, they are also feeling the effects of this. And it can lead to their frustration, their burnout, their annoyance with their work. It's not hard to see how this really quickly becomes genuine job dissatisfaction, which leads to then us losing excellent team members. It leads to worse outcomes for our organization. And and it becomes this complete circle game. As leaders, then our jobs get more difficult, more stressful, and we have even more problems to solve. And then there's our customers and our clients. They also feel organizational friction. When they have to jump through hoops to find out what our pricing is or to pay us or to schedule with us or ask questions, use our services, that impacts their experience and then their feelings towards us and our companies. And the kicker is that when we're successful in our work, when we increase and scale our offerings and we grow areas where we before were seamlessly able to answer questions and serve our clients when things were smaller in our organizations are suddenly more complicated. We're met with new challenges. One or two Instagram DMs asking about our schedule or our openings become dozens. Remembering to email a customer that we see at our program back becomes so many that we can't remember whose question was whose or whose account was whose by the end of the day. These are these are good problems to have, but they are problems and everyone feels them. If we care about our people, we as leaders need to care about our processes. So among the gazillion to-dos on our list, how do we know when and how to address this? We can so easily say we wish things were easier and so can the people working in and working with our companies. We can say we wish we had more ease at work and at home, but that is such a vague statement that feels sometimes idealistic and doesn't really feel very actionable. So today I'm sharing a suggestion with you to zoom out and look at what the friction points are. I'm someone who likes to focus on the positive, but sometimes we really do need to look and see what the sticky points are. This takes honesty to identify what is really only working, quote, well enough. What is a functioning system that could function better? These are sometimes not really urgent issues because if they were, they would have already gotten our attention, but these issues really are important to address. And smoothing these pain points can improve everything from the vibe on your team to your own stress level at the end of the day to the bottom line of your company or organization. There are a few examples that I was thinking about and I am going to share them with you to prompt your brainstorm as to where to shine the flashlight so you can identify areas of friction in your home or your work life. Okay, the first story I want to share with you is about the building that my office is in. I have an office at Serendipity Labs and I started with a co-working membership and it quickly became clear that I loved working there and so I have a dedicated office now. But this office 
the the location that I go to is on the sixth floor of a really beautiful building on the west side of Madison. And when you get off the elevators, you're greeted by these big floor to ceiling glass French doors. During normal business hours, the doors are propped open and you can easily just walk through. After hours or on the weekends though, you can still enter, but you need a key card to get in. You just swipe the key card and then you can open the glass doors. Well, one weekend I came in to get some work done and I noticed that there were these new stickers above the handles on the glass doors that said push on the exterior and pull on the interior. And I wasn't sure why the new stickers were there, but I did figure there was a story behind it. Actually, my mind first went to like, "Uh uh-oh, did someone crash through? But that's not what happened. I did find out though, I was there the following Monday and I asked the general manager, just out of sheer curiosity about the stickers. And she told me that there had been this huge uptick in IT requests saying that the key cards were being finicky and not working smoothly. And then they would check the cards and they seemed to be working. So they couldn't figure out what the issue was until they checked the security videos and realized that so often people were swiping their key card, but then pulling on the glass door to enter. And then it wouldn't work. So then they thought it was their card and they would go and re-swipe their card a couple of times. And then eventually they would go and push on the door and it would open. So it really wasn't the cards that were the issue. It was the push-pull it was the, it was human error. So they put these small stickers on indicating what to do. And immediately the IT help requests went back down to near zero. And while it may really not seem like this is a big deal, the dominoes that were falling from people thinking that their key cards weren't working really had a much bigger impact. The residents were frustrated. They thought they weren't going to be able to access their workspace. They were going to find a way to fill out this help request for the key card correction. They were complaining to the general manager. And then that was taking up personnel time from other staff members to try to correct the issue. And Then with the simple addition of some inexpensive stickers, that friction was removed. They really didn't even have to add the stickers. It wasn't an urgent thing. They could have just let people figure it out. Or when they would get these requests, they could email the people back and say, oh, we think it's an issue of pulling instead of pushing. Can you try that before we process this help request? But they decided to just smooth that friction and interrupt that problem process with a few simple stickers. And that was that. Okay, another really simple story is a throwback to when my kids were really little. They were toddlers then. Now they're all teenagers, so this is a really old story, but I really do think about this pretty often when I find myself frantic or I see other people getting frustrated by a process. I first have to tell you about how my house is laid out. It's a tri-level home that was built in the 70s. It's the kind that has like bedrooms upstairs and then on the main floor, there's the kitchen and the main entryway and a family room. And then there's a few steps down to kind of like a sunken living room and there's a powder room there and then the living room and then an exit to the basement and then to the garage. Even now, mornings before school with teenagers can sometimes get a little chaotic as everybody's rushing out the door, but like nothing compares to trying to get three very young kids, ages one to four, out the door to preschool on a winter morning when you need to make sure that the snow pants are packed and the boots and the gloves and the hats and the coats and their water bottle and whatever toy they want to drag into the car and and the snacks and the diaper bags. And I was finding myself getting really frustrated in the mornings after breakfast because in order to get all their little teeth brushed, we needed to go all the way back upstairs to the bathroom by their bedrooms to use their toothbrushes, which I know really doesn't sound like a very hard task, but they were so young that I couldn't leave them unsupervised. And so it just, I don't know, it just became a bigger problem than it probably should have been. Um, Sometimes I would grab the toothbrushes and bring them down to the downstairs bathroom near the garage door to brush their teeth down there before we left. But then fast forward to bedtime and the toothbrushes would have still been downstairs and it just was a cycle that was repeating. So someone suggested that I just get another set of toothbrushes to keep downstairs in the downstairs bathroom. A few bucks later and that problem was gone. I was able to feel like I was doing my young mom due diligence of getting their teeth brushed after breakfast and at night in a much smoother way. Friction resolved. Okay, I know these are two very simple stories and they were easy fixes and many times the friction we have is not so easily solved. 
But many times the fix is in fact right in front of us. Or once we see the situation clearly, we're able to just apply a little bit of effort to reorganize something, reorder it, eliminate something or delegate it. So here's my task to you as you prepare for a new week or a new month or a new year. I always like to get a fresh start on things. I encourage you to take a look at your home life or your work life, your organization, your team, and just see where there is some friction. Ask your team members, where is their friction? What is feeling harder than it needs to be? Some easy places to start. Listen to your body as you go through your day. Notice what is feeling frustrating. Those little aggravations add up and ask the same of your team. Their insight can be really valuable since they're seeing things from a different perspective from you. Right now, my team is growing quickly, which is so exciting because I really love to work with people on projects. And now one big focus of mine with my team is removing friction. And that's why this episode was really top of mind for me. And I've discovered a clue to finding friction. And I wanted to share that with you. I'm noticing that one big barrier to me being able to delegate parts of my work to my team members so that I can focus on new projects or we can grow things together is when there is something that I want to have some help with or I want to delegate to somebody, but it would be so hard for me to explain to them how to do it that it is seeming not worth it to me. It's just easier for me to do it myself. That is becoming a very clear symptom to me that there is some friction that needs to be resolved. I'll give you an example. I am the co-director of a creative arts summer camp and after-school program that has various sites and has grown so much, especially over the last few years. And that is really exciting and fulfilling. And I really, really love these programs. And my co-director and I have been lucky to add to our team in a few ways this year, including hiring an administrative manager to help with the back end of things. She is amazing and talented and smart, and she's so awesome. And over the last few months, we've been working really closely together to hand things off to her, and she's helping just improve things overall. And I was finding myself hesitating to start to explain certain things to her because I was realizing that the information that I needed to pass off was in so many different places. We use Google Forms for a lot of our intake for our programs, and each responses spreadsheet was in a different place for each of these forms, which meant that there are student lists in a different place for each of these sites and family contact information and roster schedules were all in different places. And it came time to explain this to her, but showing this to her felt a little bit like showing her my messy closet. And I was realizing that there, that was a sign that there was friction that needed to be smoothed over, not just so that she could do it, but I was realizing that I myself was chasing information from a million different tabs and I was needing to search for things each time I was looking for them instead of just having one dedicated place for all the information. So thanks to her patience, we consolidated all of these responses into a single spreadsheet. So now if either of us are looking for a phone number or an email address or confirmation of whether a child has permission to sign themselves out and walk home from a program, We now have one place to go to look for that, and so does anyone else who we bring onto our team. So that was some major friction that was affecting our day-to-day work that was smoothed over, and it was really an important lesson for me to watch for those moments when I'm hesitating to delegate something or just feeling like, oh, it's just easier for me to do it myself. There's probably some friction that needs to be smoothed over, and then when we take the time to do that, we get that aspirational ease that we were talking about before. We need to look for the areas where things are really not quite so easy, not quite so smooth, and pause long enough to assess what can be done, whether it's a small change or a big change, and then really make the time to do those fixes because the ripple effects of that improvement will really be felt. Right now, I'm really trying to just be an observer as I work through my different programs and I work with my different team members. And team members, if you're listening, I really do want to know where the friction is. Let's figure out a way to smooth it down because it will improve our experiences working on the things that we care about. It will improve our job satisfaction and it will likely improve our bottom line as well. 
as leaders, we can really tolerate a lot of discomfort. And like I said, we don't shy away from challenging things, but that doesn't mean that smoothing things out and making things easier isn't worth it. See where you can find a few simple things this week to smooth out. I would really love to hear from you if you do. I would love to know what works. What are you smoothing out? If you get stuck and need some brainstorms, let's let's problem solve it together. This is what I love to do. So reach out to me anytime. You can find me on social media at Jamie Gale LLC. I'll put the link in my show notes. And I'd also love it if you would leave a rating and review for the podcast. That's my little ask to you is that if you are enjoying the show and it's impacting you in some way, I'd love for you to just take a moment and rate and review it. It really does make a difference for me and I would really appreciate that. I hope you have a really wonderful week and we'll be back next time with some more leadership perspectives for you. Follow the Leaders is produced by Lit Path Studios and music is by Shane Ivers. You can hear more about this show and all the other podcasts at Lit Path Studios by going to www.litpathstudios.com.